Well, hey guys, Dave Anderson here, Heli Cool Heli Pad Man. It is a frigid day, but today I'm going to show you how to fix, maybe rebuild. You can see it's busted right here. I'm going to show you how to fix this grill. You guys stay tuned. Well, the first thing I need to do is figure out what these measurements are because you know this is a compound angle here. It not only is rounded in the front but it also drops down to this corner. I am going to measure this for you so you don't have to. So now that I have the measurements, which I will reveal in a moment, I need to clean this up, make sure that it is all dried out. Uh, if you got any um, ice, yeah, you might want to get rid of that too. Get all this cleaned up and I'm going to start supporting this. Now that it is cleaned up pretty good, I just want to show you a couple of the things. You see that is pretty well damaged. Pretty well damaged there. And there's another pretty bad spot right here. You see it's all kind of, there's a, a fix in here, but this is, this stuff just peels right out of there. Um, I don't know what they what they were thinking trying to fix it with this stuff, but that ain't gonna work. So this is the top, this is the bottom. This has to be supported two inches and this supported two and a half inches to make the curve that I need. I'm gonna do that with these two by eights. The two by eight is one and a half inches thick. So you'll need to support the top of the grill a half inch higher than the surface of the two by eight. Use the lag screw to support the bottom of the grill corner one and a half inches above the surface of the two by eight. All right, just need to pick this out of here, which shouldn't be that big a deal. Because it's just, I don't know what this is. It's a pretty weak patch, that's for sure. They didn't even patch it very well. Looks like they patched it in the broken position because this seeped through it. That's horrible. Okay, I'm gonna just put some supports under here just so that they touch. That looks about right, right there. I'm gonna do it to the other side. Okay, that looks good. And these I cut at one and a half inch so that they fit in here just about perfect. They're just a little bit, little bit undersized, but that's okay. Cause I wanted them to fit in here. And I just need to line this thing up. You know what, let me get one that has a sawed edge on both, uh, both sides. All right, I'm gonna secure that right down to that. And that'll be my backstop.
All right, now that I have it supported and it's fairly straight, I can push this one in and get it secured down, then get these clamps out of the way. Well, I think it looks pretty straight. I'm pretty happy with that. Now to take care of it. I'm gonna clean it one more time. Okay, good. Looks like I might have to put that on there just like that for a little while, just to get this to relax a little bit. Let's see if that works. I'm gonna give it about 15, maybe 20 minutes of just sitting there like that. Hopefully it'll get it to relax. Before we get into the science, we need to fix one more thing. And we got it pretty good straight this way, but the height of it, you can see that this comes up just a little bit right here. So I'm gonna have to put a little piece across here. And I think that doing that will push this piece down and help fix this monstrous gap here. <laughs> So here's the science that I was talking about. Graphite and super glue. You can get super glue anywhere, Walmart, any kind of hobby place. It's readily available. The graphite, again, any hobby store, um, some hardware stores will have graphite. Now mixing these two together will cause a thermal uh, reaction and it will actually heat up. Um, it will remain, because this is graphite, it will actually remain just a little bit um, goopy, stirrable for just a little bit of time. So I'll have some time to work with it, but I need to fill in this gap. And you know what? Super glue just won't do it. It needs to have something to help bind it in between to help fill up that gap. So I'm going to use these two in conjunction to fill this gap. Um, you can also use baking soda. It works very, very well. It's very strong, um, but I'm going to use graphite because it has a little bit longer setup time. Baking soda, is, I mean, it cooks off almost immediately. So this is the science that I'm gonna fix this with, all right? Science. Okay, I'm gonna start to put in some powder. This is graphite powder. Hopefully the wind won't come in and knock that away. Oh man, it's like, it's kind of hoping for a little bit more of a, not a gel, but now oh, this will work. Ooze a bunch down in there. Stir, 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 stir. Get it stirred up. You can see it does stay goopy for a little while, so it gives you time to work it. Check on a little bit of progress here. That's looking pretty good. I think the next thing that I wanted, because that's such a big crack, is I think I want to put a little bit of duct tape to dam that up and pour directly some of that goop right in the side of it, let that dry. Let's give that a shot. To help it dry a little bit, I just have my little heat gun set on low and just giving it a little bit of a wave 
I really want it to dry right in place. I don't want it to slump down any further. So this is actually doing a pretty good job. It isn't going anywhere. It's not tacky on the surface, but I can tell it just is not quite glued or the, the glue has not quite um, cured all the way. So like I said, if you need a little bit of help, add a little bit of heat. Now, since I know how brittle that um, super glue can be, and I know that this, this is a kind of a flexible piece, um, I have built this little bridge and I, I just want this to be able to stiffen it up. Um, so now that this is all filled in and it's hardened up like good plastic should, uh, I'm going to make some uh, JB Weld and squish this in and hopefully some JB Weld will squish out that side and it will hold it in there really nice and keep this from um, cracking. Anyway, I fabricated this with, uh, well, I'll just cut it out of, you know, piece of piece of sheet metal. All right, so I just removed the little dam there and I was using as a dam. And this worked out pretty doggone good. It kept it in place, it filled that hole. And I made another little bridge Jacob, I really can't do this with you in the way. Why have you decided to come and help today? Well, I think I finally convinced Jacob to leave me alone, go out and catch a mouse out in the field, get something warm in his belly so he can go take a nap. All right, well, I hope that you have success on your grill. I hope that, uh, that uh, you get yours fixed. And if you've got a different way of doing it, put it down in the comments, help everybody out and continue the story. My way is not the only way, and maybe you have a better way of making this work. So please leave a comment. I would certainly appreciate it, and so would everybody else that reads the comments. Well, boy, howdy, that works pretty doggone good. And uh, well, I turned this part that was maybe a $100 part. You know what they're going for online? They're like $450. I know that's absolutely nuts and I would never charge something like that for this kind of a part. But I think I salvaged it enough to make it not only a $100 part, but maybe a $200 part. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Click on that like, leave me a comment. That's always very much appreciated. And if you haven't subscribed yet, love for you to be a subscriber. See you guys next time. I'm Dave Anderson signing out. You guys be safe and God bless.